Hello again. Um, fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is the government's uh, spending, G, let's call it G, government spending, and T, taxation. Uh, it's playing around with these two um, variables which, which allow the government to manipulate the level of demand in the economy. If they want to expand, if they want to give the economy a boost, they're going to spend more and tax less. If they want to hold back uh, the demand in the economy, if they're scared of overheating in the economy, they might r tighten up their fiscal policy by cutting their government spending and maybe raising tax and leaving people with less disposable income. But um, that, that's, that's a simple overview of fiscal policy, but, but the fact is that some fiscal policy is actively carried out by the government and there are also automatic fiscal impacts, or we, sort of, we call it automatic stabilizers in the economy. And that's what I want to distinguish between in this, uh, in this video lesson. So let's have a look at this diagram. Uh, we have on the vertical GDP, the, the, the national uh, income of the or output of the economy, and time. And of course, most uh, countries are seeking to achieve economic growth. They want to raise their GDP over time. And perhaps uh, a, 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 a country such as the UK might be uh, experiencing moderate growth over time. Let's put that in here. So here we are. This is uh, the trend line of growth over time. The UK's GDP has been rising 2 2.5% 2 every year on average uh, over the last half century or so. But the fact is that it isn't as smooth growth as I've drawn it there. There are ups and downs. There are booms and recessions. Booms and recessions. And the fact is that the, if left to market forces, we might see growth not so smooth like this, but something like this. I'm going to call this the actual growth rate. Um, does that matter? I mean, after all, if they get to the same point in the end, does it matter whether there was different rates of growth along the way? Is it better to have smooth growth? After all, if the growth is there, how does it ma does it matter if you know how you get there? And I think it does matter. And I think a good analogy is this: Imagine you're driving from destination A to destination B, and it takes one hour to get from A to B. Would you rather go nice and smoothly in your car from A to B in one hour, or would you prefer to go fast then slow, fast then slow, acceleration, braking, acceleration, braking, bumping along? Of course, you wouldn't like that. It would be very uncomfortable. So in an economy. So, uh, so, like in an economy, smooth growth is preferable because we, we, we avoid the bumps uh, along the way and, and, and the unpleasantness that comes with it. Look at this diagram here. Here is a period of rapid growth. Um, this would be a boom period because the growth is, is, is more rapid than, than the trend rate. And what's being created here is what we would call a positive output gap where the economy grows faster than the trend rate. But here, between there and there, if you look at the, the actual growth rate, it's actually um, very unimpressive, and we could call this recession because the GDP is not rising. Um, there is a technical definition for recession, but let's, let's just see that this is a disappointing period of growth. And then we have another boom, as the growth is very fast. The problem with the boom, of course, um, the problem, if I can use a technical diagram like that. The, the problem with boom is um, we get inflation and all the problems of inflation, the economy overheats. The problem with recession is of course uh, the key problem is unemployment. Okay, so how can we avoid this? Well, the, the government will use fiscal policy to manipulate the level of demand. In a boom it wants to slow down the economy and then so we raise tax and consumption falls because people don't have as much money to spend um, because they're paying more tax. Um, they also cut their own government spending and government spending itself is a component of aggregate demand, spending in the economy. Likewise in a recession they can, they can uh, run a budget deficit, they can overspend, they can spend more than they collect and they can run a PSNCR. Sure, the national debt's going to rise but that can be dealt with later. So they're trying to manipulate the level of demand. It's demand management. But the truth is that there are automatic stabilizers in the economy that are doing this already. If I can just clean this up a little bit. What's happening in the economy automatically is this. During a boom, fewer people are unemployed. So the government is spending less anyway. It's giving out less 
as unemployment benefit or job seekers allowance, as we call it in the UK. Um, it gives out less because less people are, are qualifying for it. So government spending automatically declines in a boom. What's more, as people earn more, as people's wages go up, they find themselves in higher tax bands. And so their ability to spend is curtailed anyway. At least it doesn't rise as much as it would otherwise have risen. So automatically, thanks to less government spending on benefits and more taxation being uh, collected as people are on higher wages, perhaps the growth was not so great anyway. And then during a recession, perhaps the dip in output is not so great either, because in a recession, government spending automatically gets a lift uh, as people qualify for unemployment benefit. And taxation automatically doesn't bite so hard because people's incomes may fall and they find themselves not paying out so much tax. So these, these um, stabilizers, stabilizers, stabilizing the rate, uh, the, the, the growth rate, making it closer to the trend. These stabilizers are automatic. It doesn't require government to take any action. The mechanisms are already in place. The unemployment benefit qualification for that benefit already exists. The tax bans that we have to pay into already exist. They just kick in and, and, and click off automatically. The government doesn't have to do anything. If the government decides that those automatic stabilizers are not managing the demand well enough, then they can add to the effect of those automatic stabilizers by actually, by actually using active, or what we might call discretionary, fiscal policy. Um, in a recession, if the automatic stabilizers, in a recession, remember, automatic stabilizers are people getting more government uh, benefits and, and not paying so much tax. That helps boost AD. In a recession, the government could also increase government spending and reduce tax. And that's going to help AD to rise, perhaps with a multiplier effect. And in a boom, if the automatic stabilizers of uh, people having to get, finding themselves in higher tax bands and the government not spending so much on benefit, if that's not enough, the government can also decrease government spending. It can raise tax, like income tax and uh, profit tax, and, and we will find that aggregate demand falls. So that's how the government can use fiscal policy to back up the automatic stabilizers to help get that rate of growth as close to the trend rate as possible. Okay? This isn't really about how to increase the growth, that comes from supply side policies, but this is how to stabilise the growth and keep it smooth, like when you're in that car driving along the road. You want the growth to be smooth. Okay? Thanks. See you.